let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about dirty hair. Dirty hair is not fun. Dirty hair is a pain, not only for the person that has the dirty hair, but also the person cutting the dirty hair. Let me tell you something. In this video, not only am I the person that has to cut the person with the dirty hair, I'm also the person with dirty hair. Right now, as I speak, my hair itches a lot. You know why? I just been postponing doing a curl video and because I keep on postponing, I've been skipping my wash day. And at this point, let's talk about Adrian. So look, guys, Adrian's in and we have to observe. Let's observe what's going on with Adrian. Look, Adrian has grown out his hair. That's obvious, just like me. Pero, just off rip, we could tell that hair's dry. He hasn't been taking care of it, like me. And um, he's a little light on the, on the sides, like me. Okay, but mi gente, we are picking up the pick and I am going straight for it. We're gonna pick the hair out and add, add that tension. Start at the ends and lead down to the root. Remember, start at the ends and lead down to the root. If you go straight to the root, you're gonna yank your client's hair off. Possibly the head, maybe both. You don't want that. So just, just go with the suggestion. It, it, it'll work out well for you. Pero mira, look, look, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. You know, the way I'm going about cutting his hair right now was strictly for the thumbnail. You do not have to do this. All my clients that I've done this on, I promise you they've all had a laugh. I would never do this to anybody that I feel would hurt their feelings. I always get a, a I always get a, a good feel of, you know, what type of person I'm cutting, who, you know, who I have on my chair. Some people, or not all people obviously have that type of sense of humor and that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Hey, if you don't want to talk while I cut your hair, trust me, I can do that too. Pero, for now, we, we set it up for this thumbnail. As you can see, okay, all right, looking like a galaxy out here, looking like a planet, uh-huh. Looking like you got a nice hat on, pero este, we're going we gonna to yank that off. We're going to yank that off. And look, he had a lot of hair. It was months since he cut it. I think this was during, he grew it out during the shutdown and he wasn't taking good care of his scalp. I could tell that there were areas that were so dry that the skin got irritated. As I was washing Adrian's hair, I was focused on getting as much of the dry skin off of Adrian's scalp. There was a lot going on. I just wanted to make sure that he had a completely clean canvas because I definitely believe that the quality of a cut will be affected by how clean the canvas is. As obviously there's other factors that come about, but a clean canvas for me is important and I'm starting to understand or I'm starting to realize that I need to wash my client's hair. How many of y'all wash our client's hair? Let's just keep it 100, okay? Keep it, a, keep it a buck with me. Like, is it something that you guys normally do or is it something that you let slide just because it's not part of the barbershop culture? I mean, let's keep it a buck. Like, I feel for real that this is mainly barbershops that don't do this. I'm not I'm not calling out all barbershops. I'm just saying the majority of barbershops in the US don't do this. Okay, but mira, mira mi gente. Aquí, what we have is the one and a half detachable guard, okay? So I chose to go and pick this bad boy up because there's times that I feel that the plastic guards don't pick up or don't help grab all the hair. And, I, and when it comes to metal guards, I feel like 
nothing cuts better than a metal guard they're expensive though they're extremely expensive and my system or my tool to help operate this metal guard is a little outdated it's the first generation octanes but they still hit they still work and i just wanted to get the most accurate leveled out cut with the one and a half and after i did all that that's when i went ahead came back with the trimmers setting up for that high taper again we have to go with this guys my man is light on the corners and and he's receding a little bit on the on the side so you know we let's take away from what's going on let's compliment his looks let's frame his face correctly let's do all these things this is where we come in baby Check out to mi gente. We're tapering the back at this point. And look, this is very, very important. He's got a lot of kinks. I guess that's what I that's what I call them at least. The kinks, the indents. And I have to stretch the skin. I'm pointing him downward. I could have done a little bit more at this point. I, I, I gotta be honest. But you know what? I'm doing what I, I, I can. But just know. In most cases, I would definitely ask my client to look down a little bit more. I would stretch the skin and I'll make sure that the blend looks as even all the way through because when you come across kinks, it's gonna look it's gonna look darker around those areas. So make sure you look at it from many different angles. Don't kill yourself with this either, though. You know, you don't want to be stuck on this area too long. There's nothing worse uh for both parties. There's nothing worse than to be stuck in one area your client's gonna know something's wrong and you are gonna get super agitated so give yourself just enough time to work on whatever area you have you have to work on but move on work on something else and you can always come back don't forget no te no te olvides de eso okay porque algunas veces se te olvida cuando está un poco estresado so work on what you have to work on for a certain period of time move on and then come back okay no te olvides Okay, so now we're starting off the edge line. I'm starting with the middle and I don't always do it the same way for every single client. There's clients that I, I tend to start on the, the vertical bars first and then meet. There's also clients that are receding and I like to start in the highest point of the recession. So if one side is more lighter than the other, like, like your boy here, then I will start here, make sure that I line it up the best I can and then I follow through with the area that has more hair. There's more flexibility there. You don't wanna take it up too much in one area and then me and be completely screwed in the other. Um, but then again, I don't know, because I feel like if you don't pay attention to the other side, the, to the side that has the most hair and you just keep lining up that light area more than the other side you might take that other side too high and by the time you take the other side high to meet up with the other side you're just you're just dealing with a full pushback we we, we on five heads now we're no, no no longer four heads we on five heads you don't want that so pay attention to what you're doing it's basically what i'm trying to say but right here 
we're bringing out the color enhancements. I know there's some of y'all that don't like color enhancements, but there's times I like doing it. There's times I like using it. I don't, I don't use it on all my clients, but I don't feel bad when I do use it. And you shouldn't either if you like to use it or you want to use it. So shout out to Tune45. We got the compressor, the beam team machine, and we are putting in the sauce. La salsa. Okay, check that out. We are we are getting it right. All right, make sure you always come back with the razor. Make sure you tune it up. Make sure you do a little bit of against the grain when you use the razor. Please don't forget that. That's necessary. Unless your client really bumps up. Pay attention. Pay attention. The client will always leave a little bit of evidence when they come back. So always be wary of that. All right. And then we're coming back. We're going to make sure it's nice and smooth. Shout out to to nata for that for that specific day i didn't have any oil sheen i have it now i have it now but i took a little bit of uh his oil sheen for that particular cut that's my second one in a row shout out to nata but um right here we're going ahead get the little stragglers you could do it with shears i so ha so happen to do it with the masters that i haven't used in months because this is a little bit old pero tu sabes que it doesn't matter we're gonna bring the masters back to life soon Shout out to the masters and whoever uses the masters. I am not using the masters just because I haven't been able to uh, not zero gap the blade, but get a damn near close. And that's it's at a horrible, horrible place right now. Horrible. Well guys, that right there is the cut. I don't know if I could have done a better job. That is as good as we can get with what we had. And shout out to Adrian for being a good sport. I hope you like this video, guys. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe in. Hit that like button because you know it helps the channel and your boy is on the grind. Make sure you share this video with people. We are growing. We're going we going we going to bring this channel back to life. ¿Me entiende? Let's get it. Hasta la próxima, mi gente. Peace.